A few weeks ago, I did a video asking you which post-processing application you think did the best job processing this image. In that video, I presented you with five different process versions of this image processed independently in Lightroom Capture One, On One Photo Raw 2020, Luminar 4, and Exposure X5. I also gave you a link to download those images and the RAW file so you could practice yourself. Well, after that video posted, a couple people mentioned that they would love to see my processing workflow for wildlife photography using Capture One. So that's what I'm going to do in this video. I'm going to process the same image in Capture One. Now, if you haven't seen that video I'm referencing, or you haven't had the opportunity to download the raw file for this, uh, this image, uh, in the description below this video, I'll have a link to all that so you could get it. Now, as far as processing it in Capture One, I have it in Capture 120. I'm in the default workspace, which actually isn't the workspace I'm used to working in. Um, I have my own custom workspace I created, which I'm more familiar with. So if you see me fumbling around, that's because I really don't know where everything is. And just to show you, if you go up to Window Workspace, you can see I have one called Anthony's Workspace down here. And when I click on that, you can see everything reconfigures and all the adjustments are over on the right. And I actually have a tab dedicated tab with all the adjustments in pretty much the order I most often do things. So um, I could go very quickly when I use my custom workspace. But we'll go to the default workspace because that is the workspace you'll probably see if you download Capture One today. They have a 30-day free trial. Um, I encourage you to try it out before you buy it because it is rather expensive. I'll link to all that in the description below as well. All right, so we have this uh, image opened up in the default workspace. And typically I like to crop first, but this is the capture. I don't have to crop. Uh, I was pretty close to the bird and I used a pretty long lens. Also in the description below the video, I'll have a list of all the equipment I used and the settings. All right, so first thing I like to do, I mentioned is crop. I don't need to crop. So next is light. Uh, so I'll go to this exposure tab. Um, it's this tab right here. And I, actually, I'm jumping ahead of slightly. It's only because I kind of know what's going on here. Actually, what I'll do first after I crop is I'll go to the lens correction tab. And any lens corrections, I make sure they got applied. Um, chromatic aberration, high distorted areas, that's checked. That's fine. Uh, you'll see diffraction correction is not checked. This because this is a mirrorless camera. And the lens corrections were built into the RAW file. And if I check that, nothing happens anyway. But if you're using a DSLR, make sure that is checked as well. Um, I don't need to do any other adjustments here. So now I really will, sorry, jump to the exposure tab. And this is where I, um, I just start processing it for tone. I don't worry about color or anything like that. And I start usually down here with the high dynamic range section. And that doesn't mean HDR. Um, that's kind of a bad name, I think, what um, they did here for Capture One, naming that high dynamic range. It just means highlights, shadows, whites, and blacks are adjusted there. And what I like to do is I look first at the brightest part of my image, which is uh, the feather area right in here, and I'll go to the highlight slider, and I'll just pull that down until I see some detail come back in that area. Then I'll go to the darkest part of the image, which are the feathers right in here, and I'll go to the shadows slider and I'll just open that up until I see some more detail in the shadows. Maybe just even a touch more. Now we have the white and black adjustment. Actually the white and black sliders are new to Capture One version 20. In previous versions they weren't there and I'm used to using Capture One without those two sliders. I really prefer to use levels so that's what I'm going to do here. What I'm going to do is uh, I'm just going to bring the shadow side. This is the far left side. You can see how the histogram is kind of flat. There's no information. Then all of a sudden it juts up right there. I just take this over at the bottom till it is at that point right where it starts to jump up. And you can see how it darkened the darkest parts of the image. Then I go to the highlights and I do something similar. Now in this image, there really isn't any information for a long way and then it starts jutting up and I don't really want to pull it that far. That to me just looks way too bright. So I'll just eyeball it and bring it down. And you could see there, uh, there, you know, just those 
uh, two sliders and the levels adjustment. And we did quite a bit to the image. There's before and there's after. And there's before and there's after. And by the way, I'm getting the before after by holding the Alt or Option key. It's Option on my Mac, Alt on your PC. And I'm clicking on this Reset button. So make sure you hold that button in when you're clicking on that button or you'll reset the image. All right. So I just did that. Um, I'll jump down to Clarity. And it is pretty sharp and I don't need to do much here. So I just maybe put up a clarity of five, structure of three even. Don't want to go too heavy, especially with wildlife photography. You don't want to kind of misrepresent what the animal looks like. So you just, you know, in this case, just want to make it, you know, make sure the feather detail is there. And I was relatively close to the bird, so I could see the, the detail in uh, the plumage. So that looks pretty good. After I'm done with tone, which I am, I'll jump over to color. And the color tab is right here. It's this little like three circle thing. And um, white balance is fine. I don't need to do anything there. I'm not going to use any of the Fujifilm film simulation modes. I'm just going to leave it on auto. I think it looks fine. Looks natural. That's the way the bird looked. Uh, what I am going to do is I'm going to go down to the color editor. And I'm going to go to the green tab because I think that grass is just a little bit overwhelming. So I'm going to take saturation down on the grass a little bit. And I'll experiment with lightness. I don't know if making it brighter or darker does anything that I like. So I, maybe I'll just make it a touch darker and bring saturation down just a little bit. And I don't want to bring it so, so desaturated that it looks like that or anything. And fortunately, the bird doesn't have any green feathers or no green plumage at all. So I'm not affecting the bird uh, when I adjust this. I just want to just make that green grass a little less noticeable. I could go to the yellow tab as well, and that will help with the green as well. And take the edge off it. So I think that looks pretty good. Um, I think the white balance is fine. I don't really need much to do here. I mean, I think it looks pretty good color-wise. And um, you'll notice, you know, I'm not going uh to add any more vibrance or saturation the uh, thing the, it's pretty colorful i don't really need to do that so there's no reason to then what i'll do now is i'll go to the detail tab this is this little magnifying glass here and i'll zoom in and i with an apple magic mouse you could just drag your finger on the mouse and you could zoom in or you could use this um slide this slider over in the top right hand corner or you could use the center click wheel of your mouse and you could zoom in. And what I'll do is I'll go to the luminance noise reduction. And I'm just going to turn that up a touch. Try to get rid of any noise I see there. I don't see much color noise, so I think we're good there. Uh, okay, we're looking at the bird's face. Um, maybe just a little bit of sharpening. Hit a default amount there already. I think that's pretty good. You don't want to over sharpen it either, so you could zoom back out. And actually, I'm pretty much done. Um, I, there's one little thing I want to do. I want to brighten up this area here because the eyes of your subject, whether it's an animal or a person, are the most important thing and what you want people to notice. And you could see the way the sun was uh, kind of high in the sky and hitting really kind of the other side of the bird more so than this side, kind of in front of the bird. But this part here is a little bit dark. But um, before I do that, what I'm going to do is go back to the exposure tab and i'm just going to go to the vignette control and just see if i add a vignette yeah i kind of like that and now okay i want to brighten up this part of the bird's eye uh, right in here so what i need to do is add a new layer to do that so we're going to go right here to the layers panel and i'm going to click the plus sign just to add another layer it's a new adjustment layer and you can see that by the adjustment there the little like a slider icon. And then what I'll do is I'm just going to push exposure up. And you see it's not doing anything, right? Because it's on a layer here that isn't, it's an, it's an adjustment layer. So there's no pixels there to affect. So it's not doing anything. But I'm going to turn that up temporarily so I could see what I'm doing. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to get the brush tool. The brush tool is right here. Just click on it. And it's the draw mask tool, I think is what they actually call it. And I'll get a smaller brush by hitting the left bracket key. The right bracket key makes it larger. 
Now what I'll do is I'll just draw in here and you can see that there's a red mask going on when I'm drawing like that. And when I let go, you'll see it's way brighter because I turned exposure up, right? So I'm just going to ease that back down until it looks kind of natural. And what might look even better is if I go to, let's say, the shadows and open up the shadows a touch. See that? I'm going to bring exposure back down. Double clicking on the slider itself will reset it. Just kind of bring that up. And I think that's it. That's all I want. And I'm done. Uh, there it is. Beginning to end. Processing and Capture One. So that's it. I hope this satisfies everyone's curiosity of how I go about processing um, a wild bird using Capture One 20. Again, I'll have links to all that stuff I mentioned in the description below the video. And thank you, everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon.